this is my setup it's a 2016 Hobie Pro Angler 14 I've been using it for over a year and I will explain later on but I would show you my like to show you my setup for those that are interested in how people set up their kayaks for uh, fishing I mostly do freshwater fishing only this is a used jet ski trailer that I bought off a guy that never really used it anymore and always had it on the end of the lakes and uh, it's never seen salt water so it's in really good shape I think I got a pretty good deal on that and it really helps with uh, fast loading and unloading at ramps to try and get off the ramp and not block up people's fishing. I use a Hummingbird uh, Helix 5 for a depth finder. It's got sock. This is my on the water review of my Hobie Pro Angler 14. It's a 2017 model or it might be a 2016 model. It's the first year they came out with the 180 drive. And as you can see, I've modified my drive. I, I took the plastic uh, handles that Hobie had off. They kept breaking because of when I'm pad pedaling, my uh, pant legs would hit, break those things off. So I just ended up drilling this out a little bit and running some 550 cord through there and putting a little piece of plastic to keep them from getting tangled up. And I really like that. That's one modification. Another thing I like to do is a lot of people use those uh, river anchors on the back or the river stick or whatever they call them. And there's another model too. I can't remember the name of it to anchor your boat up. But instead, I just took a cheap anchor and rope and then put cleats on all corners of my boat, at least three corners of my boat. That way I can anchor up and the wind will turn the kayak whichever way I want to. I used to use the... Um, cable trolleys on the side of the rope but I kept getting hung up on those so I was kind of worried about that I just ended up taking them off and using these cleats I have a yak attack black pack box on here with uh, eight rod holders and I generally carry four or six rods sometimes seven or eight but rarely because they I just just don't need to have that much on the thing but some tournaments I'm not really sure about what I need to use I also, for tournament fishing a lot, I love it. So underneath my seat, I have a catch board that comes. I don't have my tag on there right now, but it makes it real easy to measure the fish, take the photo, and enter it during tournaments. Um, I keep the seat gets a little bit uncomfortable with my skinny butt after a while, so I put a pad on here on the seat to make it more comfortable for long days in the seat. And I actually wrap the foam in there with a trash bag to keep that from getting waterlogged because it would it definitely when it gets wet it takes days for it to dry out keep a short paddle for just maneuvering in tight spots but i also underneath the hatch in the front i have a paddle that's a two-handed ended i can snap together in case my drive has any issues i can have like a regular standard two-bladed kayak paddle to get back home inside my tackle box i have several rigs lined up that you can see here um and I, uh, for today we're, there's a threat of rain so i've got my worm bag inside a trash bag um i use a garmin G, or garmin helix 5 unit with side imaging and i've got that set up so that I, I can see what screens i want and i use basically the side imaging i just actually dropped the transducer underwater which i have it so i can pull it in and out easily got side imaging here comes the rain down imaging and the sonar on there and then I also just have the local map GPS map one other thing I wanted to touch on that I didn't touch on when I was on the water the other day is how this leash here holds my catch board in that thing will definitely sink it's built like a dang tank it's very good board but you definitely need to attach it so I just leave that thing on that seat post there so I can come and attach it when I put the seat in the boat and also I wanted to mention that I took a, a, a mini mag light pouch and the electrical tape that on there just so I got my, my pliers really handy. They're cheap pliers, so I'm not I don't leash them or anything to make sure that you know they don't if they sink they fall overboard and they sink I won't be out much. That just too many leashes sometimes gets aggravating. And I also wanted to mention that when I the way this box was made it had like a rubber thing that attached it but I just made up some bungee clips here so that I can attach it so that it won't flip out on overboard if if the kayak does flip. Um, as you can see, I can just unattach that real quickly when I'm moving it in and out of the boat. And one last thing I wanted to mention with this Yak Attack box, I notched this. It's not a very pretty job, but I notched this, and I think I saw it on Fluke Master, so that these boxes come out more easily, because they wouldn't come out without having to twist them when the uh, box wasn't notched. And then lastly, I put these little, just these little twist things on there, so that when I'm when I am moving and I'm afraid that maybe I can get flipped. 
this won't come open and everything spill out that's pretty convenient but lastly i did haven't really come up with anything yet to attach the rods in there so if it gets really rough and i'm, and I'm afraid i might flip over i just pull the rods out put them in the rod holders then leash them up front but i'm, I'm thinking about getting some kind of little bungee or something and attach a little eye ring here and a little eye ring here and then just kind of flip it over there so to hold the rods in but like i said i haven't really gotten around to that yet i, I might even tie something here just a little clip or something I haven't figured that out yet anyway i just wanted to mention that i forgot that on the on the water review the other day